a large explosion in Lebanon's capital, Beirut. A huge explosion in the Lebanese capital, Beirut. A massive explosion. Massive and deadly explosion. Last Tuesday, a huge explosion ripped through Beirut, the capital of Lebanon, killing hundreds, injuring thousands, and making hundreds of thousands of people homeless literally overnight. In this video, I'll be discussing exactly what happens to a human body exposed to a blast. How do people get injured in these explosions? How do people die in these explosions? And is there any way we can reduce the injuries from an explosion? That's what we'll be seeing in this video. If you're new here, my name is Ajay. I'm a doctor from Bangalore, India, and this channel is where I discuss health, lifestyle and a bit of medical entertainment. So if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. Let's get started. First, let's take a very quick look at what happens in an explosion. First, there has to be an explosive material like how ammonium nitrate was in Beirut. And this explosive material contains a lot of potential energy. And when this explodes, it releases all that energy in an instant into other forms of energy like kinetic energy and thermal energy. Now this sudden release of energy spreads all around and causes damage to people and things that come in its way. Now how much damage it causes depends on a lot of things, the important one being how far the object is from the explosion. Now imagine X and Y. X is at 10 feet distance from the explosion and Y is at 20 feet distance from the explosion. Now the effect from the explosion is inversely proportional to the cube of the distance. So X gets 8 times as much as damage compared to Y. Now let's see the various components of the blast and how each of them affect the human body. First comes the pressure wave or the shock wave. This is caused by the sudden expansion of air around the explosion sending out highly compressed high pressure gases. Imagine tons and tons of pressure suddenly passing through the body. This will rupture organs in our body that have air like lungs, our intestines, um, around the brain, the eye socket and the middle ear, most specifically the eardrum. In fact, this is the most common injury sustained by soldiers in a war when there's a grenade or a missile exploding near them. Right after the pressure wave comes the very high speed wind. How fast can you imagine the wind can go? A category 5 hurricane can have wind speeds ranging from 250 to 300 km per hour. But the wind that follows a huge explosion like the one that happened in Beirut can have wind speeds of up to 2500 km per hour. What this does to a person is that it physically pushes the person. The person gets thrown around and he hits some solid objects and injures himself. The wind also gets sharp nails from the explosion or from objects around the explosion. Imagine thousands and thousands of small sharp blades flying all around a person. And this is the reason why terrorists add nuts and bolts and all metal pieces to dirty bombs, you know, to increase the damage. In fact, a single sharp nail can be lethal. Some of you might remember the Church Street blast of Bangalore. It was a very small explosion and just one person died. I studied this case when I was in med school in forensics and I don't remember the whole uh, case but what I clearly remember is that she didn't have much injuries outside. There was just one sharp nail that went through her skull and shattered her brain. After that comes the heat, the chemicals and the smoke. The heat from the explosion can cause a lot of damage. It doesn't have to be a continuous exposure to heat like say a person being on fire. Just a heat flash in thousands of degrees for milliseconds can kill a man. They can also be chemicals from the explosion or radioactivity from nuclear blasts and this can cause varied type of damages to the skin and to the internal organs. Also just the smoke itself can cause a lot of damage to the respiratory system and that sometimes can be lethal. Now there are factors other than distance that affect all this. Like say if you're underwater, would the effect be more or less? It would be more because unlike air, water is not compressible. So a lot of energy will be conducted to the person around. If a person is in a closed room or next to a wall, the effect would be more because the pressure wave reflects off solid surfaces. Take a look at these two graphs. The first one is in open air and the second one is in a closed space. In open air, the pressure decreases rapidly, becomes negative and then it becomes normal again. But in a closed space, the pressure wave gets bounced around and that multiplies the damage. Now these are the direct effects of an explosion on a person. Of course, there are other factors contributing to injuries like objects falling on a person, buildings collapsing, etc. Now so the safest place you would want to be in an explosion is in open air and as far as away from the explosion as possible but that just depends on luck and chance. 
but there's something that we can do to reduce the amount of injury from an explosion. And that is whenever you see an explosion or hear a loud sound, drop down to the ground and cover your head, ideally with the foot facing the direction of the explosion. This reduces the surface area of your body exposed to the blast and that reduces the damage from the blast. That's it for now. I've also linked a few charities and organizations that are working in Beirut right now to help these people. Even small donations of 100 rupees or $1 or a euro can go a long way when it comes in large numbers. So please check that out and donate as much as possible. Let us do our small bit to get Lebanon out of this crisis. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and clicking on that bell icon so you get a notification every time I put up a new video. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.